Well, Dr. Boy, here we are. All right, Mr. Bergman. Check it out. We are talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. Ooh, that sounds neat. Podcast 3.2. So let's talk about what Podcast 3.2 is about. It's about the details of what is light. What is light? Yes. Not just the stuff you see, Roy G. Boop, but all the other stuff. Oh, the other stuff is what's really interesting. It is, really. It is. It's truly fascinating that there's so much light that you can't actually see. That's right. So a little review from the last podcast, guys. Turns out that, um, well, light can be separated. So, Dr. Boer, explain this funny picture on the wall. Oh, wow, well, look at this. What we have is a beam of white light. So it's white light, yeah. Uh -huh. Enters the prism. And then what we have over here is the white light separated into the visible colors. Yeah, and I've seen it like in a rainbow before. Exactly. The rainbow yeah. is exactly the same thing, except instead of using a piece of glass, you're using little droplets of water to do the same thing. That's kind of so it's like a rainbow. So it, it is. works like a rainbow. Actually, exactly. Like a drop of water, actually. Exactly. Okay. So, so what does that tell us? It tells us that when white light is dispersed, Spread out into its colors. Spread out its color. Look at that. That's a good word. It demonstrates that white light is a mixture of all of the visible colors. Yeah, like like the the rainbow. Exactly. You've got red and orange and green and blue and all those colors. All the colors are there. That's pretty cool. Okay, I get that. So, so, but something cool. Oh yes, you can take all those colors and combine them back together to make white light. What do you mean they can combine back together? I you understand. Can. Show a picture, Mr. Oh, Bergman. Is there another picture? Oh, check it out. There There's it a is. Picture. So you've got white light going into prism one. Exactly. And then lo and behold, it gets spread out into okay, its color. Okay, that's the color deals. That's called dispersion. Dispersion, okay. And now you take those colors and you put them into another prism, and lo and behold, look what happens. Oh. The colors are recombined into what you started with, white light. Okay, so what is this telling us about light? tells us that light is made up of many wavelengths of electromagnetic, electromagnetic spectrum. So the difference between different colors of light is what? Just the wavelength or frequency, whichever way you want to describe it. Wavelength determines it? Okay. Yeah. All right, so what's this? We got we got like little balls of light. Yes. Remember when we were talking about light, we said sometimes we can treat it like Photons? Oh, photons! In the last yeah, podcast, we talked about the little wave packets, little baseballs of light. Exactly. Newton loved this method of describing light, and so he thought of light as being made up of individual particles, ah. each one of which has its own separate frequency or wavelength, which gives us its characteristic color. All right. So, like the red light is like one wavelength. That's right. And so, how, how long is a red wavelength? Oh, red wavelengths are something like about, oh, 300 nanometers. And I know nanometers is unbelievably small. That's a billionth of a meter. I a remember billionth that of a one. meter, right. Yeah. And the violet down here is something like 700 nanometers. So you say, oh, gosh, these are really small. Are those backwards, Dr. Boyer? Isn't, uh... You're right! By golly! Well, I must have remembered something from the podcast. Yes! That's how we learn. We make mistakes. Yeah, I right. like that. So, so the red here is the long wavelength, about 700 nanometers, okay. and now the violet's the short wavelength, about 300 okay. nanometers. Now we got it right. So violet, shorter wavelength. So the color makes the wavelength of the light. I remember yeah. the wavelength. Wasn't the wavelength like you make a wave and it's like how long the wave is? That's exactly Symbolized right. by that funny little symbol. That's there. right. I don't remember that from the last Distance podcast. from crest to crest. Okay, so that's You good. got it. Now, this next picture... Shows us kind of the Ah, uh, here we go. So now that we're not looking at it as little balls of light, like the baseballs, we're looking at it as... Oh, look at these things. Now we're describing it in terms of waves. Okay. Now, that was the competing theory with Newton at the time. Right. Newton said particles, but Christian Huygens and Holland said, no, it's waves, and I can prove it. So I said, we had, we had like a controversy between... Oh, Newton huge and controversy. What's the other dude's name? Christian Huygens. Huygens. There's a funny name. I know. Huygens. Huygens. Sounds Danish or something. Well, he's actually from Holland, Holland. so he's Dutch. Oh, Dutch. And he said, wait a second, no, 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 light is a wave and I can prove it. And Newton said, no, 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 light is a particle and I can prove it. 
And so they argued and argued and argued. Of course, what do we think about now? They're both. That's right. They're both That's right. the key. Check it out. Amazing that we didn't even think of that, huh? All right. So that leads us to the electromagnetic spectrum. And we talked about this last time, ladies and gentlemen. So, so Dr. Boyer, I see we've got a bunch of things. Gamma, oh, X, golly. ultra, what's up What's really neat is, is that of the electromagnetic spectrum, which goes from here all the way to here yeah, yeah. and beyond, yeah. To infinity and beyond. Oh, there you go. Uh, visible is just a little teeny tiny piece right here. Okay. All of this other stuff, astronomers want to know about because it's not just the visible light that we see that's interesting, but it's everything else. So you're telling me there's more light in the world that I can't see? There's yeah. Light I can't you know, see. Poor humans are limited to the visible range. There are some animals and insects that can see a little into the ultraviolet, a little into the infrared. We can't. We perceive infrared as heat, but we don't see it. Uh -huh. And we get suntan from ultraviolet, oh, yeah. but we don't see it. Uh -huh. ah, so those ultraviolet rays are just light. That's just light of a different wavelength. And my eyes just can't see that just, wavelength. Your retina can't detect uh, these. Okay. And then you've got x-rays, which you know from medicine. Right. And then gamma rays from the nucleus. Yeah. Way short. And then, of course, as we go to longer wavelengths here, we get to radar and yeah. microwave, FM radio, TV. television. Oh, yeah, I watch TV sometimes. People are into ham radio, short waves know about this, AM. And then it keeps even going on further down here for uh, power lines have wavelengths in this region right here. Wow. So, yes, all of this is given off by objects in the sky, and astronomers want to see it all, not just a little bit. So there's light, guys, that we can't see. There's huge amounts of light we can't see, but we can build detectors that can detect them. Exactly. I mean, your cell phone, we talked about last time, is essentially one of those detectors that detects microwave radiation. Well, so this picture right here, Dr. Boyer, it, that looks like Saturn, but it kind of doesn't look yeah, like Saturn. It's got funky colors. Yeah, what's up with this? We're looking at it in a part of the spectrum we can't see. Infrared, the heat that we perceive but can't see, that's what Saturn looks like. It's, it's red. Yeah, it's not going to be red if I can't see it. That well, that's because what we do is we take the infrared and then we translate it to colors that we can see. Okay. And so we say, all right, certain colors represent certain infrared. And this is called, by the way, guys, a false color image. There you go. Um, but it, it reveals things about the, uh, the planet that you're looking at or whatever you might be looking at that um, are very instructive yeah. to astronomers. Saturn gives off heat. It gives off heat. So it's got some uh, some heat of some kind. Right. All right, so that's infrared. And then ultraviolet. Now that's not a like a photograph of the sun. That's an ultraviolet photograph yeah. of the sun. Once again, we're looking at a part of the spectrum we can't see. And this is a false color picture of the ultraviolet that the sun gives off. OK, in fact, if you look at that, there's something interesting happening on there, by the way. What do you yeah, right look at this right here. What is that? This is plasma jets flying out from the surface. Isn't that called uh, a solar flare? Solar flares, yeah. prominences. Yeah. It's amazing how much energy the sun gives off that we don't even perceive. And so you know, we're going to have a chapter on the sun, guys. Exactly. And we'll talk about uh, solar flares and prominences and those funny words that Dr. Boyer just mentioned. And of course, we've got radio waves. Oh, yes. We know now, you can't see radio waves. Oh. So, so what's going on, guys, is that um, it's given off waves okay, of a certain wavelength. And the That's wavelengths right. are actually quite long That's right. in the whole scheme of things. They're a meter long or a few, you know, they're visible, not actually, they're not visible to our eyes, but they, the length of the wave is something that's well, not like a billionth of a meter or something crazy. No, like it's that. much like on the order of centimeters, centimeters up to meters. Up yes. to meters. And so that creates some, uh, that's just right, it's just another um, wave that has a different wavelength. That's right. And so if you look here, the difference between gamma rays is his um, wavelength is 10 to the minus 14th meters. That's really, 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 really small. And you go up here, up to like an AM wave, 10 to the fourth, that's 10,000 meters. That's 10 kilometer wavelength. 10, 10 kilometer wavelength. What a difference. And the stuff we get to see is, you know, 700 to nano billionths of a meter, maybe 500 or whatever. Okay? So make sure you understand kind of the, the differences. All right, so there's energy carried by electromagnetic radiation. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because. Uh, if something's like a little ball hits you, it's going to hurt. Yeah. Well, you know when infrared heat 
hits you, you feel it. There's heat there. That's energy. Also, oh, like I, when I made my fire this morning in yeah. my fireplace, and I kind of felt the heat. That's energy carried by electromagnetic radiation, infrared. That was infrared light. That was infrared. But I can't see it. You can't see it, but you can feel it. But I can feel it. And you know there's heat energy there by what you feel. Okay. So, what's up with this sort? Each Photon uh, has energy given by some equation. What's that? Well, what happens is, is that the physicists said, okay, if light can carry energy, how much energy uh, does it carry? Can we come up with a formula that will describe how much energy they can have? So we're not just interested that there's energy. Scientists love numbers. Yes. You've probably figured out by now that we love math. How much? So is how the much energy? Not just some energy, but how much energy? That's right. Looks like we've got a funny equation. E equals H C over oh. squiggly funny thing. All right. Let's E means energy. Okay. E energy. That makes that sense. That makes okay. sense. I'm I like that. that. C right here. I, we've this, seen that before. We have. That's the speed of light. Huh. That's three times ten to the eighth meters per second. Right? That's that right. And then this right here, of course. Oh, we've seen that guy. Before. This is the wavelength of the light. Okay, wavelength. How long the wave is. That's right. Now it has to be measured in what unit, Doctor Boyd? It has to be measured in meters, and light is in meters per second. We got a funny thing. And H. then we got this. Henry. Henry. No, it's not Henry. No. This is called Planck's constant. Planck's constant's an H? Yep. Why didn't they call it P? Planck's constant. You'll have to ask Planck about <laughs> that one. Actually, I think P guys, what happened was is they just ran out letters. P stands for pressure. Yeah, it oh, stands for all, a lot of other things. And so, H um, is rarely used in science, and so there it was, and so we could use so, Planck's so constant. So we use C for speed of light because it's a famous number. So if you have a famous number, you get your own letter. Well, yep. guess what? Planck's constant is a famous number, so he gets his own letter. Yep. They picked H for some reason. Now, what is Planck's constant? Planck's constant takes this and converts it over to energy, and it has just the right value so that we can figure out how much energy light has. It has units, weird units, joules times seconds. And so that means that energy winds up being in units of joules. This is the standard unit that physicists use to measure energy of everything. By the way, Planck's constant guy is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th there joule is. seconds. So that's the values. Now that is, folks, a really, really, really small yes, number. Indeed. 10 to the minus 34th, that's point zero 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 zero. How many zeros? 34 zeros, 33 zeros, I guess it would be, and then 6, 6, 2, 6. It's a very small number. On our calculator, remember what you're going to do is you'll say 6.626 E negative 34. There you go. That's how you'll tell me. Speaking of your calculator, I believe we've got a little problem where we're going to solve a problem. Oh, there it, there is. it is. How much energy does a photon of blue light, which has a wavelength of 600 nanometers? Well. You know, all right. I think we can do this. I know the equation. So yes. Let's see if I can figure this out. E equals H C over lambda. Right. Okay. So I know H. That's that number. That little tiny number. Well, that's it. I know C. I know speed of light. Now lambda. We got a little problem with lambda. Ah, uh, yes, we do. You said a minute ago. It's got to be in meters. This is not in meter. This is in nano nanometers. Nanometers. So we're going to have to convert. Times it by a billion, right? No, not times a billion. Divide. By oh, billion. divide. It's a nano. By. It's a billion. So I'm going to say this is equal to 6.626. I'm going to put it in the calculator notation. Yes, e yes. negative 34, and that's a joule second, times C, which is 3.0 E8, divided by 600 E, now what I'm going to say is just negative nine. There's the nano. Because that's dividing by a billion, because it's times a billion nanometers in a meter. And now we're going to probably need a calculator. I think so. So let's bring our trusty calculator in here. Okay, so what have I got here? I need to turn my calculator on, I guess. So I've got what? 6.626. Remember, I do not push the times button. I do second E, and I say negative 34 times 3 second E. I don't have to say the point zero, by the way, because it's the same number, right? And then divide it by 600 second E negative 9. By the way, guys, make sure you don't push the subtract button, but that you push the negative button. They do mean something different. 
on your calculator. And so we get this very interesting number. Wow. I get 3.3 .3 .3 times 10 to the minus 19. And then, by the way, I didn't put all the units today. Hello, this is in uh, meters, and this was in meters per second. There we go. And so the seconds cancel. You got seconds here, and the meters cancel, and you're about 50. Yay, we got joules of energy. Now, Success. That's a tiny number, though. That joule number is really, really small. It is, but to amount of energy that light carries is... I thought light energy. carried lots of energy. That's a small amount of energy. Ah, but if you got a lot of photons hitting you, that adds up. Yeah, actually folks, the key thing here is this is of a photon. That's right. This is one photon. If you have lots of photons, you would then take this number and times this by the number of photons. Okay? Which, the number of photons that are hitting you, even as you sit and look at this podcast, are a lot, a lot. like 10 to the 50th or 40th, or I don't know, 30th, it's huge, big numbers. So, yeah. so don't let that kind of throw you off as you're doing this, okay? All right, that leads us, uh, so a photon, oh yeah, let's move the calculator out of the way. A sh photon of short wavelength radiation carries more energy than a long wavelength photon? That's right, because remember our nifty little formula, energy, was proportional to one over the wavelength. Aha! Okay, so if the wavelength's short, short the energy's high. Short high, and if the energy is, this is big, E is small. Yes, yeah, if you divide by a big number, you get a small number. Exactly. Well, that's simple math. Yep. I think this math stuff isn't that hard, is it? No, it's easy. No. Okay, so short wavelength, high frequency, high, high energy. energy. Long wavelength, low frequency, low energy. Probably the best way to illustrate that is to go back and look at our chart. All right, so let's kind of look back at our chart there, Dr. Boyer. All right. So. Ah, there it is. So short wavelength. Short, 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 short wavelength gamma rays. Those are short. 10 to the minus 14 is a very small number. 10 to the minus 14. So what's the, they're going to have what? So very high energy, short wavelengths, high frequencies, loaded with energy. Okay, here, here's what I think you guys ought to do. You might want to print this page. And once you print this page, put this in your notes. Mm -hmm. And then what I want you to do is write down. So why don't you write, Dr. Boyer, where energy would be high, let's say, on this Okay, chart. so we have high energy here. High energy on that on the, on the left side. And then, and then over then, here is low energy. All right, where would be like high wavelength? And then long wavelength. Long wavelengths right here. This 10 to the fourth meters long That's 10, wavelength. That's meters. Low, low energy. So long energy. Why don't you write long, in, long, or long wavelength? Okay, long. so long wavelength. And so where would short wavelength be? And obviously, then, obviously on the other end, right. we've got short wavelengths right here. And so you guys may want to just print now that you've kind of got it labeled, or you could have printed it early and then kind of fill in the fill long. In yourself, short. yeah. And then no the problem. visible light's kind of medium. Kind of weird to think of it when it's yeah, that short. It's, it's in between. It's, yeah. We think it's got a lot of energy, but it doesn't. Yeah, okay. So that leads us to the wrong slide. So this leads us to another topic, radiation and temperature. Wow. What's up with that? That's like a funny looking graph, which you, by the way, may want to sketch or print into your notes. So what, what is this graph talking about, Dr. Boyer? Well, let's take a look at these axes. Yeah. First of all, wavelength. Wavelength, yes. Okay. We understand that. Now this funky little symbol oh, right here, yeah. that mu is 10 to the minus 6 in the metric system. That's a, a word for micro, by the micro, way. Micro. Micrometers. Okay, so we got a number. I'm and then that. on the vertical axis here, we've got intensity. And it doesn't have any particular units right well, we, now. We, this is just how strong the light is. the lab that we did where we measured yeah. the light intensity? Is it Luxes? Luxes, yes. So it's like, you know, we can do that. I we understand how that works. Okay. Okay, good. Now, the key is, is notice that for a particular temperature. I see that Kelvin. I remember Kelvin. Then you this. have a line right here that represents all the wavelengths of light that an object having this temperature will give off. It looks like there's kind of like a peak to that graph. There is, it is. And notice that for this particular object at 6,000 degrees Kelvin, it has its peak right where we can see it in the visible range. So you can imagine you have some object right here and you heat it up to 6,000 Kelvin, which is really hot. That's very hot, yeah, 6,000. And we would say it's glowing white hot. Okay. 
And surprise, surprise, yes, it glows white hot and that white light contains all these colors and sure enough, if you look at all the colors that this thing is giving any off, any object, any object gives off, this particular object has most of its energy and so like, visible. Yeah. Like the light bulb at my house? Exactly. It gives off light. light, light so it would have a temperature of 6,000 Kelvin? Roughly in now, that range. Yes, it what does. What if something is like colder than that? Ah. Like say 5,000 Kelvin. Well, notice here, we're going down in temperature. So it's not colder, it's still hot. It's, but it's hot, colder, colder. Notice that the peak right here is shifting oh, yeah, away peak. from the visible and it's moving out in the range of infrared. And so you couldn't see those. So you couldn't see it. see it, but you could feel it. Oh, so like, like my fire this morning, yeah, exactly. I, I saw some light. Of you course. saw some, but not much. What you were feeling most was heat energy. Uh, so any object that's at a certain temperature, we can figure out what its color is. Or right? Right. We can use its color to determine its temperature. That's right. Or, or vice versa. Or vice versa. Exactly. If you know the temperature, you can figure out its color. Exactly. So that probably leads to some kind of a mathematical law. I oh, bet. you've got it. So we've probably got some kind of a law that does this. And it's called Veen's Law. Veen was the one who said... Veen? That looks like wine. Veen. Veen. Bein. Veen. It's German. It's pronounced Veen. He's actually Austrian. That's Is he Austrian? Okay. I think so. So it's called Veen's Law. Veen's Law. And in Veen's Law, it says... Oh, I think we skipped something. There we go. The wavelength at which an object radiates most strongly is inversely proportional to the object's temperature. Ooh, yes, you discovered Dr. Boyle, that's got some weird words. Inversely proportional. Ah, uh, that inverse. There's two words, I don't know. Inversely and proportional. Yeah, inverse and proportional. What does those mean? Okay. That sounds really mathematically hard. No, it's not. Okay, okay. so explain it to me. So let's say we go back to our one formula that we already know. Oh yeah, HC C over, over lambda. lambda. Yeah. E and lambda are inversely proportional, and E is proportional to H and C. What does proportional mean? Though? Proportional means that if this goes up, this goes well, up. Proportional, one goes up, one goes up. What That's right. Inver and inversely proportional means that if this goes up, this goes Inverse, down. Inverse, upside down. Yeah. So those arrows are upside down versus both right side up. That's right. Oh, so that's not so hard, guys. No, Inversely proportional, one goes up, the other goes down. In fact, it's not even more than that. If one's doubled, the other's cut in half. Yep. If it's proportional, if one's doubled, the other's doubled. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, or tripled in a third or whatever that might be. Okay. So that leads to the... There's Keen's Law in law. all its glory. So T equals some number, 3 times 10 to 6 Kelvin nanometers. So um, divided by the wavelength. Yeah. So the wavelength has to be in what? This is a All trick. right, we got to be careful here. Units are a little tricky on this. Yes. Part. Now this is a little confusing. This is just the units oh, okay. for this number right here. Right. Notice there's a nanometer right here that says that the wavelength has got to be in nanometers so that it matches this constant. So right actually, here. this little uh, deal here, guys. Here, some people think of this as a negative subtract button. It's not <coughs> subtracting. The crowd's a dash. Maybe we should not even have it there. Yeah, it should be at times. It really is Imagine if we dot. just put a little dot right there yeah, and just call it a day. Yeah, that's probably what we need to do. So, it looks like a mathematical equation. Should we maybe solve it? Yes, let's do it. A mathematical equation. I like cool equations. We should probably solve this mathematical equation. So, what is the temperature of the sun, given that the maximum wavelength is 500 nanometers? So, we can figure out the temperature of the sun by just looking at it with yep. Uh, uh, a wavelength thing. Yeah, now you remember you're just looking at the surface of the sun. We're not measuring the temperature inside, just the surface. But this All is right. impressive enough. So I've got my equation. Mm -hmm. I can say T equals that number. What was the number, Dr. Boyer? Three, three point times ten to the minus six, I believe. Three. I think it times should be back and double check. Ten to the minus sixth. And um, that was Kelvin nanometers. Kelvin dot nanometers. Divided by the temperature, the, the wavelength, wavelength, in wavelength in nanometers. In nanometers. And that's at 500. Isn't it positive? It's got to be positive six. Oh, I think you're right. That's why you need to write these things down and double check. I always. Okay, so it's 10 to positive six. It we, is. We have to double check that. We forgot. Thank goodness we have some reference. So we just divide those numbers. Is it that simple? It is just that simple. So I'm going to take, um, turn my calculator on, let's clear it. I've got 3 E6 uh, divided by 500. Is it that simple? It is. And I get 6,000. Aha! 
6,000 uh, units on that, then manometers cancel. And we get Kelvin. It's going to be Kelvin. So the temperature of the sun is 6,000 Kelvin? Kelvin. So if you were to stand on the surface of the sun, it would be 6,000 Kelvin. It would be very toasty. But you don't have to stand on the sun. To know what the temperature is. You just look at it with a spectrometer, and the spectrometer says the maximum wavelength is 500, and that's it. We're done. Bean's law tells you the rest. So, so could I do that with a different star? Any e star. I could like point my spectrometer at uh, Alpha Centauri. Yes. And I could figure out what, what its temperature, temperature is on its surface. That is so cool. It is neat. Just with a very simple division equation. That is just so easy. Anything that glows, you can measure it. Nice. Okay, last thing to talk about, guys, something called a black body. Black uh, body. That yeah. sounds really scientific. Oh, it is. What's it's, a black body? A black body is an object that absorbs all light that falls on it. Okay, cool. And what does this mean? Radiation, Radiation curve is smoothed. Remember that graph we just had? Okay, that graph. Yeah, let's go back to that graph. Oops, so I don't have that graph. Yeah, that graph that we just had, I remember it. We had the, the this one that had that looked like that. That's it. Okay, so. That is a black body curve, as it turns out. Oh, That's so cool. this is called a black body curve. Okay. That's, notice this nice and smooth. It means light is smoothly irradiated at all wavelengths coming out. Okay, so that, that smooth, so that's, if you see that curve, it's a black body. We've got a black body. So what are some examples of black body? I'll bet the sun's an example since we used that as an example. Yes, indeed. Gone, and we use that curve. So it's a black body. It black gives body. off wavelengths of light. It's a black body. And earth. It, how's the earth? It doesn't, does it radiate energy? It does, but mostly in the infrared. So we can't see it, but if we could, we could figure out the temperature of the earth, by pointing a spectrometer from space. That's Earth. right, and we do. And we do. That's how we measure the temperature of the Earth. Is it really? Okay, so there are things that aren't black bodies, though. Well, technically not. So anything that glows, gives off heat energy, is technically a black body. Although some things we might think like. So why are fluorescent light bulbs considered not black bodies? On for you know. Yeah. Well, that's because. The energy that's being produced here comes from the collision of molecules inside. So you've got little tiny molecules here that are smashing into each other, okay. and in the process they give off light. That's not really a black body. A black body is just something that has a certain temperature, and it gives off light because it has a certain temperature, whereas the fluorescent light bulb is not doing exactly the same thing. Because it's being excited. It's being excited and giving off light from the excitation of molecules. Now, physicists would say it's a distinction, but there's no difference. Okay, all right. But for our purposes right now... We'll say it isn't a black body. We'll say it isn't. Another example of a non-black body is a neon light. Neon light. light. It's the same thing as Dr. It's Boyer. a glowing there's gas. There's gases in here, and these molecules are um, colliding with each other and causing the light to be produced. Um, so that's that's why it's not one. So, well, folks, um, and then this is that black body. Here's diagram. the black body diagram again, and you can see that as you change the temperature at which an object is at, it, it changes more, more infrared. It changes its spectrum. You can see it's going towards the infrared side. So, like the Earth has a temperature of I, I don't know, but the average temperature is you know 40, 30 degrees Celsius. Or, yeah. So in Kelvin, something. maybe let's call it. 200, 300 Celsius. So, yeah, so for the temperature of the Earth would be... Let's call it 300 Kelvin. 300 maybe. Kelvin. You can see this curve is going to go way out here. And this is mostly infrared. We don't see it, but we can measure it. Yeah, so that makes sense. So we, we can measure it. And I believe that's the end of podcast 3.2. It is. So we will see you guys in class.